Your next witness. Your Honor, our next witness is Eric George. He was the attorney for Amber relating to the op-ed. Will you please stay? All right. Your name for the record? Sure. Eric George, E-R-I-C. Last name is George, G-E-O-R-G. -E. And could you also state your business address, please? Sure. 2121 Avenue of the Stars, Suite 2800, Los Angeles, California, 90067. And what is the name of the law firm that you work with? It's Brown, B-R-O-W-N-E, George Ross, O'Brien, Anaguay, and Ellis. And you are an attorney, Mr. George? I am. I am. And I take it from the name of the firm that you are one of the named partners? I am indeed. Okay. Uh, what are your areas of practice? Litigation, uh, largely in the business and entertainment areas. Have you handled defamation and libel matters? I have. Where are you barred? In other words, where? what states are you a member of the bar? Sure. In California, New York, and Washington, D.C. And are you also a member or barred in the United States Supreme Court? I am. Can you please tell us where you attended undergraduate and law school? Sure. In Georgetown for both undergrad and law school. What, if any, service did you have with the Council of the United States Senate Judiciary Committee? Sure. Uh, in... I'm just pausing to get my dates correct here. Um, in approximately March of 1999, I began service as counsel to the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee, where I served through uh, about mid-2000. And what, if any, service did you have to the secretary, uh, the legal affairs secretary to the governor, Pete Wilson? Sure. Uh, from about March 1997 to January of 1999, I was counsel to then Governor Pete Wilson, and my specific title was deputy legal affairs secretary. Have you been recognized for your career achievements since you have been an attorney? Uh, I'll say immodestly, yes, in uh, various ways that uh, lawyers are from time to time in magazines and publications and whatnot. And what, if any, uh, uh, recognition have you received as one of the top 100 attorneys uh, in California? The legal paper annually puts out a list of the top 100 attorneys in California, and I've been fortunate to be selected as one of those uh, for many years. And what, if any, recognition have you had as being a super lawyer in California? Uh, same answer, except that's, I believe it's called Los Angeles Lawyer Magazine. I, I could have that wrong, but again, annually they put out a list of their super lawyers. All right. And are you also a member of the American College of Trial Lawyers? I am. What what is one of the what is the one of the qualifications for becoming a member being invited to be a fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers? Sure. So the, the college reaches out to individual lawyers who have distinguished themselves and generally occupy the top 1% of law practice. And it's an organization dedicated to the development of professionalism within the practice of law. I'm going to now turn to Amber Heard, and I'm going to ask you, Mr. George, how long have you known Amber Heard? Um, I have known Amber Heard, gosh, it's got to be a good five years I'm going to be referring 
to an op-ed, and I'm going to use the term op-ed. It, it's obviously an opinion editorial uh, that uh, Amber Heard uh, ended up uh, ultimately publishing with the ACLU. And so in the Washington Post, December 18, 2018. Um, so as I go through and ask these questions, I'm going to be using just the term op-ed. Will you be comfortable with me using op-ed and understand it to mean that particular publication on sure. December 18, 2018? Sure. So what, if any, legal representation did you provide to Ms. Heard relating to the op-ed? She presented to me a draft of the op-ed and asked for my counsel in terms of reviewing it, uh, editing it, and finalizing it for publication. When is the first time Amber Heard reached out to you in connection with the op-ed and reviewing the op-ed? It was certainly within the time frame of December 6, 2018. In connection with the op-ed, what, if anything, was your objective in representing Amber Heard with respect to the review and revision of the op-ed? I reviewed it and spent some significant time on it to make sure that there would be no meritorious claim that could be brought against her in connection with a defamation or related type of tort claim and ideally with that in mind to minimize the possibility of her ever being sued in connection with publishing it so mr george i'm going to ask you to take a look at exhibit number nine yes are you familiar with this document i am please describe what it is uh, as its title it's a judgment of dissolution of the marriage between Amber Heard and Mr. Depp. Were you familiar with this document and its contents when you represented Amber Heard relating to the review of the op-ed? Yes. And what was your objective in representing and advising Amber Heard on the op-ed in connection with this stipulated judgment of dissolution of marriage? So to, uh, my objective was to make sure that there would be no meritorious claim that could be brought against Ms. Heard in connection with the publication of an op-ed, whether that is a tort related to, say, defamation or something uh, akin to it, uh, but also including any contract-based breach claim uh, arising in connection with the judgment. And what, if any, What, if any, indications did you have from Amber Heard during that time frame that Amber did not intend to follow your advice or did not care if she was in a compromising position or might be at legal risk? So let me answer that this way. Uh, really two points. Number one, uh, there was never anything that she said to me to the effect that uh, she was willing to run some risk of being sued or that she wouldn't listen to my counsel or anything of that sort. Uh, number two, that uh, she affirmatively did follow in all instances my counsel with respect to these particular edits. What, if any, legal advice provided by you to Amber Heard respecting the Washington Post op-ed was disregarded by Amber Heard? None, to my knowledge. What if any legal advice provided by you to Amber Heard respecting the Washington Post op-ed was followed by Amber, Amber Heard? All of it. What, if any, legal advice did you provide to Amber Heard in connection with the drafting and publication of the op-ed that was not made in good faith by you? I, I acted in good faith throughout and with the best of my abilities.